Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Mayor Welch. Glad, glad to be with you. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Oh, no problem. That happens. Yeah. So just to remind people, they uh, in June, you announced that you were launching a new request for proposal process so that you could identify prospective developers for the 86 acre gas plant district site. That's the home to Tropicana Field. So why was it that you uh, sent this out for people who missed that news? Why did you send out an RFP again? Well, the previous RFP um, had several respondents and uh, the previous administration had willed that down to to two, Midtown and Sugar Hill. Uh, and as a county commissioner, I participated in a lot of those uh, conversations and presentations, but a lot of that did happen during the pandemic. And so I think number one, community participation was limited uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, and our environment, I think has been impacted, whether it's um, the demand for office space, uh, certainly um, another important aspect to me and to the city council, uh, last year during the campaign is that the raise were not part of the conversation, not part of the dialogue. And so how could you really plan uh, for 86 acres when you really didn't have full community uh, opportunity to engage because of the pandemic and other factors, because of the change in our economics uh, due to the pandemic, it's a different world uh, post COVID uh, from supply chain to the, off to the um, demand for office space. Um, so I thought it was important that we uh, start a new RFP, made sure it brought us certainty on the Rays uh, stadium component. You know, uh, the Rays, I feel, need to uh, decide, you know, if St. Petersburg is where they want to be. We've had real good conversations with them going forward, re-engage the county, re-engage the city council on that aspect. And I also think we need to have a, a, uh, a, a focus and priority uh, even more so on equitable development going forward. Um, in the interim, since the previous RFP was, uh, was uh, offered, we've had a structural racism study completed that showed a pattern of structural racism in, in the city of St. Petersburg. We also had a disparity study that showed an underutilization of minority businesses systemically. And so I think those, the, the, the outputs of those two studies need to be uh, embedded in this RFP to make sure we have equitable development so that the entire city benefits going forward from this generational project. And the structural racism part of that has, might have to do with the fact that this was a historically black community that when the Tropicana field was built was essentially plowed under and so what do you think, what are some things that the city might be able to do to help to rectify that? Well, I think being intentional about making sure there's equity going forward. Um, I read a story last night where USF is doing this with the new uh, USF Bull Stadium, uh, making a priority that uh, I think in that case, 20% of the construction opportunities go for minority businesses. I think we have to have that kind of intentionality going forward. And, and, and I grew up in the gas plant and my grandfather's business was one of those businesses that was impacted, not by the pursuit of baseball, but prior to that, the first dislocation was when the interstate came through and disrupted not only uh, the gas plant community, but the deuces on 22nd Street. And so the pursuit of baseball was really the second disruption, a, a far more complete disruption because the entire community was, was uprooted and dis dislocated. But that was a functional community with almost a thousand residents, businesses, um, and we need a tangible and sustainable way uh, to pay tribute to that and to have an economic impact to support minority businesses throughout the city. Since you mentioned the interstate adjacent to the Tropicana field site, the gas plant district is I-175. It's just maybe a mile or two stretch that connects um, I-275 to downtown, and there have been there have been people who have suggested that one day that might be just made the, the uh, interstate might go away and that might, might just be made part of the community. Is that on the table in this development plan? Look, we're op open to all options and open to the discussion, but I think we need to be clear eyed about what community we're restoring a connection to and you know what the real purpose for um, any uh, restructuring of, of I-175 would be for. The entire gas plant community was uprooted and dislocated to the west and south. So those folks aren't there anymore. There's no reconnecting to them 
just by taking down I-175. They moved west, south, and in some cases out of the city completely. But you can build programs that support young people, that support businesses wherever they went to. And I think that uh, kind of connection makes sense. The physical connection to Camel Park to the south, for example, there's Camel Park School and there's also uh, the park there. And, and beyond that to the south is the Camel Park neighborhood, which is a neighborhood that has changed um, radically uh, since the days of, of the gas plant. And so re restoring that grid system, I get that, but let's understand it's not reaching the folks who were originally impacted by the gas plant dislocation. Our guest is St. Petersburg Mayor Ken Welch, and you're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. We're talking about the request for proposals for the rede redevelopment of the historic gas plant district, which is an 86 acre site, home of Tropicana Field. And Mayor, recently you've been having uh, community conversations that last Thursday you hosted the third one to get input about the priorities from the community about the redevelopment here. What are some of the themes that are emerging through these community conversations? Well, the, theme, the, the main theme is equi equitable redevelopment of the historic gas plant district. Uh, and it was great to see the commonality of that, whether it was um, with the downtown partnership uh, luncheon or whether it was at the Foundation for Healthy St. Pete or USF or St. Pete College, that theme that seems to carry the day. And within that, you hear uh, about you know affordable housing, about youth opportunities, about connections with education. Uh, certainly about equitable economic development opportunities for businesses as we uh, go through this probably more than 10 year process to redevelop uh, Tropicana Field. So we've had almost a thousand uh, touches with folks showing up in person or virtually. Uh, and that's exactly the kind of feedback we wanted to get going into this process. And there's a natural body of water that flows through this site, the Brooker Creek. And one of the um, priorities that people have mentioned is to integrate Booker, Booker Creek that is into the design of whatever comes in the, in the, the place of what's there now and yes. use it to activate surrounding neighborhoods. Heard that a lot, activating Booker Creek. I, I think it, like you said, it's a natural um, amenity to build on and to integrate. We heard a lot. I remember uh, Ms. Betzer uh, at the third community conversation mentioned integrating that green space throughout the project. Uh, kind of like the, the waterfront parks uh, flow all the way down. Uh, and uh, I think that is what makes St. Pete special. Uh, it's what that access to our green spaces and waterfront, particularly downtown, is unique. And we need to incorporate that in, in the gas plan district redevelopment as well. When the redevelopment plan is picked, whoever you decide to go with, um, how will, are, will there be um, things in place to? to help to, to guarantee that local people will be hired to do the jobs that are created? It, it's a priority. Uh, we don't want to have that kind of investment and have folks bring in uh, workers from, from elsewhere. And so having those trades involved, apprenticeships involved, subcontracting, and, and, and not just requiring it, but finding ways to remove barriers uh, so that those local businesses can uh, be involved and benefit as well. This coming on the heels of our disparity study, uh, I think the timing uh, is providential. Um, part of the issue with disparity is access and taking down barriers to, to uh, folks doing business with the city. And so that, that is already the work that we're going to be involved with uh, with the response to the disparity study already. One of the criticisms of the region in general you know, all of Tampa Bay and mm -hmm. most of Florida, in fact, is that there's no real mass transit uh, available. So um, is there any chance that the redevelopment of this site where the Tropicana field is now could spur some sort of regional transit initiative? Uh, and I'm not talking just about buses. I mean, could there be a light rail uh, hub at, at this site? Is that anything that, that could be in the works? Well, certainly initially there will, will be a BRT stop, bus rapid transit, which is really the first premium transit uh, project in Tampa Bay uh, that's received both federal and state and local support. Uh, that's being constructed as we speak. Folks see the red lanes on the first avenues that'll go from downtown St. Pete all the way out to the beaches and back. And eventually 
uh, connect to Tampa over the new Howard Franklin uh, in their managed lane concept. So we're seeing the seas to premium transit to, to what I call, you know, just urban transit that, um, that you'd expect in any major city. We're finally getting that in St. Petersburg and I'm hopeful that Tampa will be next, but we've got to have those, those regional connections as well. Another concern really for the whole region and the whole state is affordable housing. Um, pr presumably whatever gets built on this site, there will be housing for people. How can, what kind of guarantees are you putting in place to make sure that it's not just luxury housing for uh, the, the richest people, that there's some workforce housing and, and affordable housing? No, we, we sent a strong signal that affordable and workforce has to be a part of this. Uh, and in fact, not only uh, on site, but we want to know how you can support off site uh, affordable and workforce housing as well. Um, and when I came into office, I asked both of the remaining master developer teams 15 additional questions. And one of those questions was uh, given the current environment and the spike in, in home prices and rental, you know, how could you change your response? And uh, Sugar Hill, for example, had a a um, multifaceted response to increasing affordable and, and rental uh, housing, uh, affordable and home ownership housing at the site, I think more than 5,000 units. And so if folks know that's a priority, I think they can be very creative in addressing that need. And we're stating without uh, any qualification that is uh, a requirement for this site. And then I, I'll, I'll end with a big question about the raise. You mentioned the raise earlier. You mentioned that you've been having conversations. What are the chances that after 2027, the raise will still be playing on, presumably on a new MLB stadium in, at this site? You know, I think the chances are good. I, I think they're better than they were, uh, certainly before we came into office because the conversation is happening with the raise. You know, we ultimately like it, might get to a number that's too big for the city. We won't pay any price, um, but I think the the spirit of collaboration uh, is fantastic at where where it needs to be. We're getting down to to real numbers and real needs, and we'll find out if we can we'll be able to come to an agreement. But we're working with the county, uh, and the county has been a major funder for the current Tropicana Field through the bed tax. We'll make that same kind of ask uh, for the new uh, raise uh, home. And we're, it's a good place to be in. And I'm fairly confident that uh, we'll work something out. Is there anything else that people should know about the potential redevelopment of this gas plant district? Yeah, it, this is not a stadium redevelopment. It is, it is the redevelopment of a community asset, the historic gas plant district. Uh, we welcome folks to weigh in on this. We wanna thank everyone, the thousand folks who've weighed in uh, through the community conversation so far. Uh, and we're confident we're going to build uh, the best uh, community project for our city going forward uh, for generations to come. And it's about us all moving forward together. Well, thank you very much for joining us on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Mayor Welch. My pleasure, son. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.